out of curiosity, in your framework, does the Turing test come into this at all? Like, is there any place at which you would like would use some version of that? Like, like a thing that I had come up with was to say, I think I was narcissistic enough to to put my name in. I said, like, I think called the Murphy duration or something like that, or to say, like, what's the length of time that someone would have to interact with the thing to be able to be pretty sure that wait, I don't think I'm talking to a human here, and that presumably that would just keep getting longer as as these things get better. And at some point. Like, what is it that you'd have to talk to it for th- three? Oh, no, I know what it was. If, it, if you embedded it in a robot body that looked human, and then the idea was, well, how long could somebody interact with the thing before they were like, I don't think that's actually human. And suppose you could go two years. Like, surely we'd call that artificial general intelligence. So, like, that was kind of the argument I was making, that some of the critics, you just make it um, by definition, no, it can never be. Like, you could be married to one of these things and go 40 years, and maybe you'd be wondering why you weren't ever having kids maybe, but other than that, you just say, no, no, because actually these things don't have a soul. And so therefore, you know, they don't think, I mean, that's fine. And maybe we can get into the metaphysical stuff later. But my point is just, I think with some of these definitions, like they they were setting the thing up to fail. Like there was no way even in principle mm-hmm. it could ever pass the hurdles. And to me, that seems kind of like not in the spirit of what these questions are about. Yeah. And, and personally, I've, I don't know. I, I, the Turing test, I think, is a nice heuristic. And, and for those who don't know, that's the idea that if by conversing with one of these systems, if it convinces you that it's a human, then it's passed the Turing test. And so I think that these systems have done that. You can have conversations with it. You can always try to trick it and, and get it to, there, there are ways to get it to mess up and give you strange responses that you're like, oh, okay, that's clearly not uh, a human. But as a decent heuristic, I think it's fine. I don't put a whole lot of weight into it because I, the way I see it is that these are kind of just differences of degree. There's no clear black and white line where it's mm-hmm. like, yep, we've crossed over. And this is because one of the issues in this space is that intelligence itself is just really poorly defined, let alone, you know, general intelligence and so right. forth. And so that becomes, I don't know, I'm not willing to die on any of those hills. Okay. All right. So I, if I understand your position, you're saying in a sense, though, yeah, people seem to believe that, oh, once it hit AGI, then we're dead because if it got to the point where it was well-rounded, well, then it could just go off on its own and then just keep improving itself. I think that's the the fear that like it, if there's some engine that's really good at playing chess, it's fine to just let that thing sit by itself and just run, you know, more and more teraflops and blah, blah, blah. And what if it just becomes so amazingly good at chess that we can't even conceive of how good it is and it's like well okay so what though who cares like that the worst is going to happen is this thing's just going to get so unbelievably good at chess we can't even conceive of it but it's not going to also then knock out the president and install a, a puppet dictator or something you know what i mean and so but the problem but the, the concern is if the thing just gets good enough that it is could passably be a human and all the other walks of life And it still has the ability at night to sit there and work on itself and make itself 1% better each night, then we're dead. That's kind of the fear. Yeah. And I think this is laid out well by guys like Ray Kurzweil and and Nick Bostrom. So Bostrom is famous for his paperclip maximizing thought experiment, where he talks about the idea of researchers will be working with what he calls a seed AI. So just a really basic AI system that's then let loose and it's able to start training and improving itself. And it's given a simple mundane task like trying to generate as many paper clips as possible and figuring out, okay, this is your goal, maximize paper clips. And then you run an experiment. This is common in academia and computer science where people will say, okay, like let's just play with a little toy problem like this, give it something simple so we can just measure and examine what's happening with the system. Is it achieving this? Is it not? And we can go back and we can tweak it. And it's a, it, it's easy to control all the variables with that. So somebody gives the CDI this mundane goal of creating paper clips. And then because it's a CD, like a proper AI that's going to actually improve itself over time, then what it does is it starts to learn and learn more about the world and figure out more long range planning, try to determine what could inhibit it from creating this goal. And so it will realize, hey, these humans could be a threat to me. I might need to isolate myself or copy myself onto other systems and distribute myself so that I can't be unplugged or taken out. Once it does that, it'll start to learn about, okay, now how do we try to get these paper clips to be made? And then once it gets good enough, it'll start to improve itself and be better and better until it's starting to just maximize as many paper clips and it basically turns the entire planet to a big paperclip and <laughs> and so forth. 
That's the thought experiment that he goes through. And a lot of people, I, I don't think, take it seriously because it is pretty ridiculous, like talking about maximizing paper clips. But that's also part of the point that Bostrom is trying to make with this is that something that might seem very mundane and very simple could lead to these runaway scenarios if his assumptions about AI are true. Okay, yeah, I liked it because at first I almost intervened and thought you were going off on a tangent. I mean, I knew that was a cool thought experiment. I've and plenty of people talked about that. So I it wasn't that I didn't want to talk about that, but I thought at first, oh no, Christian, that's different from what I'm talking about. We're talking about like the terminate, but I guess that's what he what he's getting at is to say the threat of super AI is not simply a Skynet type thing where it seems like it's this malevolent thing that is like an alien race that happens to be embodied in computers that emerged from us and oh geez we should have done better with our programming then mm -hmm. no it could be like you say just a system that's just quote mindlessly cranking out paper clips and if we just put it if we want it to be able to learn and we put it into a controlled environment in an office setting and say oh look it's going around and it's taking some other some staples and it's like bending them that's interesting that's clever Oh yeah, it's turning the staples into more paper clips. Very good. Okay, that's a. It, but <clears throat> right there, you've kind of opened Pandora's box because if you're allowing it to do something novel like that, and the system's capable of learning how to do that, well, then in principle, yeah, couldn't it also learn that? Oh, the way to keep making more paper clips is first of all to take out all these pesky carbon-based life forms that are trying to stop me for some reason. And yeah, yeah, that, that's a risk to my paper clip. Mm -hmm maximizing the objective and so we need to do something about it so yeah that's what a lot of people are concerned with is that it could be something very mundane and something very simple that just gets this runaway exponential increase in power and intelligence in order that winds up destroying the world and, and bringing it down so some people talk about you know the alignment problem ensuring that these are, are actually going to be taken care of or like as it gets better that it's aligned with human objectives and human flourishing and people will also talk about you know if something's Make the analogy of, say, humans to animals. If something's just this incredibly intelligent, it might not even mean any harm to us, but it could still wipe us out. Just like we put a Walmart down the road and all those rabbits and birds and everything that was living in that open field are now dead or displaced because they, and they have no idea why a Walmart went in. Something well beyond their ken. And so we just crush them because it's, it suits our interest, even if we like the birds and the rabbits and everything else that was there. People are concerned that that same sort of thing could happen to us in light of these super intelligent beings.